Imagine that you're working a shift. Maybe you're moonlighting. It took you two hours just to drive here. Ambulance brings in a patient who is in a rollover snowmobile accident. He was intubated en route, and on exam, you quickly realize that he has a blown pupil. This is bad. You send him to the CT scanner and notice quickly that he has an epidural hematoma. You're at least two hours from the nearest neurosurgeon by ground, and there's no helicopters flying. To burr or not to burr? Is there really a question? Epidural hematomas aren't that common, and epidural hematomas that cause herniation are even less common. So if you work out in the middle of nowhere, this might happen to you once in your career. We all know the classic presentation of an epidural hematoma. The classic board question is the patient comes in and says that they got hit in the side of the head, they passed out, and then they were okay for a while, and then they started having some symptoms, maybe some headache, nausea, vomiting, and then they rapidly deteriorate. These tend to occur in young patients, people with a long functional life ahead of them. And if the patient has a herniation syndrome, which is really the indication where you would potentially do a burr hole, they should have a blown pupil on the ipsilateral side of the lesion because of compression of the oculomotor nerve. Eventually, the patient's brainstem gets squished, and that's what we want to avoid. So what can we do? We can do all the things we normally do to protect the brain. We optimize oxygenation and perfusion. We try to control ICP. But we know about all those things. I want to talk about burr holes. But if it makes you feel better, Hippocrates described this procedure in 400 BC and seemed to have done it successfully at least a few times. So why should I do a procedure that's scary that's probably not going to work anyway? Well, it does work. Pretty much all the cases that have been reported have been fairly successful. And why can't we just wait for the neurosurgeon to do it? I mean, there's got to be a neurosurgeon somewhere. Well, transferring takes way longer than we think it does. In fact, the fastest times ever shown have been greater than two and a half hours. From the time it takes for the ambulance to get to the scene, to get them to the ED, to get a CT scan, to call a neurosurgeon, for to get them to accept the patient, to load the patient again, transfer them, to go to the OR, to start the surgery, and to decompress, it really usually takes about five hours. Every minute, really, after that patient starts showing signs of herniation, affects prognosis. So when should you burr? You should burr if there are signs of herniation and no neurosurgeon is present in your hospital, and you think it's going to take more than maybe two hours to get to them. So what do you need to do a burr hole? You need basically some kind of drill, and I hope you have one in your ED. So what do you do? The traditional site is you go two finger breasts above the zygoma and two finger breasts anterior to the auditory canal. Another method is to actually count the CT slices times the thickness of the slice and go down to where you think the hematoma is. You shave and clean the area, you make an incision, and then retract the skin and scalp, and then you use your drill. And if you're using a clutch drill, which, man, I hope you are, you keep drilling until that clutch stops. So I hope that I've made you think about this potentially life-saving procedure. Maybe it's worth practicing in a sim session or cadaver lab, because one day you might have only one opportunity to save someone's life or brain.